welcome to the next lecture of uh, cooling tower now previously we had uh, discussed about uh, the various design parameters pertaining to the cooling tower now in this uh, uh, particular chapter we will we are going to discuss the different type of cooling tower various components as associated with the cooling tower now before we uh, we'll go into the discussion of uh, this particular type of uh, cooling tower uh, let's have a brief outlook that what we discussed in the previous lecture uh, in previous lecture we discussed various concepts of uh, heat transfer in cooling tower pertaining to the cooling tower elements of uh, cooling tower we had a discussion in which uh, uh, the different type of lower uh, lower air flow etc then different type of heat transfer aspect in cooling tower was discussed like mode of heat transfer we discussed about the couple of aspects about the heat transfer theory that is overall heat transfer coefficient and merkel's uh, heat transfer theory now since uh, we uh, discussed about the importance we discussed about the various uh, theoretical aspects of uh, cooling tower now time has come that uh, we need to discuss the different types of cooling tower now there are various types of cooling tower natural draft cooling tower uh, cross flow force draft cooling tower then cross flow induced draft cooling tower then contra flow force draft cooling tower then con contra flow induced draft cooling tower then indirect evaporative cooling tower then evaporative condensers then we will discuss about the various components and materials for cooling tower this including the packing now let's uh, start the discussion with the different type of cooling towers the main component of cooling tower they are mainly packing drift eliminators water distribution system and the fans except in the natural draft towers where we don't have this these fans the relative depositions of these components are the main reason of different type of cooling towers now these all types are depend on the hot water entering at the top or near the top of tower and descending under the gravity through the packing to the basin now if you recall the figure we are we are having this water supply line and here we were having the the packing and this is the the uh, the uh, cold water basin so uh, this depends that how you are circulating the heat you know, hot water and then how it is descending through the packing and as uh, collected at the bottom now um, as i, I discussed that uh, there are different type of uh, cooling towers like natural draft cooling tower cross forced uh, cross cross flow forced uh, draft um, cooling tower cross flow induced draft cooling tower contra flow forced draft cooling tower con contra flow induced draft cooling tower indirect evaporative cooling tower and evaporative condensers let's talk about the natural draft cooling tower now it they are rarely used nowadays Uh, because uh, you need to look into the various aspects including environmental and energy issues now they have large hyperbolic concrete tower which are familiar site adjustment to the fossil fuel fire uh, plants so if you go across the, through the railway line and other thing you see that there are so many uh, cooling towers or so many structures near the the um, uh, power generation plant where you may have this type of uh, structure now this uh, previously these uh, natural draft towers they were constructed entirely from timber and uh, were site to uh, take advantage of prevailing winds the hyperbolic shape of cooling tower enabled the chimney effect to be exploited and reduce the dependence on wind direction so that resolves the problem that why they are having so special type of uh, structure the draft induced is a function of uh, the difference in the density between the ambient air uh, entering to the bottom of the tower and the air water vapor mixture leaving the packing the calculation of operating air flow through the tower this must 
take account of the drought induced and the resistance of uh, flow caused by the packing and elimination because there may be a certain packing. So, they, they offer um, the resistance towards the flow. Now, here you see that uh, this is the basic anatomy of uh, the natural draft hyperbolic cooling tower. Here we were uh, we were talking about this uh, hyperbolic uh, structure. Now, here you, you see that uh, this is a packing and we are having the air inlet and this is the cold water basin uh, and this is the air flow. And this you see that uh, this is the air uh, drift eliminator and you see find that uh, these are the hot water distribution. Now, this is the actual figure and it is a very common figure if you pass through nearby this uh, any any power generation plant, a steam operated power generation plant. This shows the operating phenomena of natural draft hyperbolic cooling tower. Here you will see that um, there is no fan etcetera. So, that is why this name impl implies the natural draft hyperbolic cooling tower. Now, let us talk about the cross flow uh, forced draught cooling tower. Now, in this type of cooling tower, air is forced through the packing horizontally uh, with the drift eliminators on the out, outlet side and axial flow fans they are normally used. Now, a simple gravity hot water distribution system may be applied to this particular approach. The modular arrangement may be made to increase the capacity by mounting two or more units side by side um, and such as the arrangement facilitates the control as a fan can be switched on or off according to the season and cooling demand. Now, here you see the basic anatomy of uh, this uh, cross flow force draught. Uh, the things are um, same, the basic phenomena is same. Here you are having one axial fan with the in inlet fan and this is the packing and uh, you are having this hot water distribution pan and supported by these louvers and these are the drift eliminators. Apart from this as usual we are having the cold water basin. Now, this is the actual figure of this uh, cross flow force draft cooling tower. Now, let us talk about uh, the cross flow induced draught cooling tower. Now, here the axial fan are normal for this arrangement and this tends to give more even distribution of air through the pack compared with the force draught design, but makes the control of drift rather more difficult. Now, here you see that this is the air flow and this is the packing and uh, as usual we are having the hot water distribution with the drift eliminator. Now, here this is the axial, uh, axial fan at the end of this uh, air flow. Now, apart from this uh, we are having the twin pack version that is a twin pack uh, cross flow induced dot co um, uh, cooling tower. Now, here you see that we, the, this, this is the special uh, design here you are having the air flow and this is the, the eliminator, all these uh, packings are supported by these eliminators and you are having this uh, um, axial fan over here as usual we are having the cross water, the, this cold water basin and hot water distribution network is attached over here. Now, this arrangement enables vertical discharge of uh, the outlet and this is to be effective. Now, here you see that uh, in this uh, particular uh, photograph, uh, the two cross flow induced draught tower showing upon the pan gravity distribution system. So, here you see that and these are the packings. Now, that the fan power for a given performance is lower uh, than uh, with the force draught design and a large area of drift elimination this can be accommodated. Now, the fan motors usually um, here you see this, these are the fan motors. The fan motors are mounted in the warm moist air stream and must be suitably protected. Now, let us talk about uh, the contra flow force trot design. The air is forced upward through the pack by a fan mounted at a low level here 
axial or centrifugal fans sometimes uh, centrifugal fans may also be used. Now, the use of centrifugal fans enable um, the fan to be floor mounted with a resilient uh, connection between a fan casing and a tower. Such an arrangement reduces the vibration because see when um, all these axial fans they are operated at a very high speed, uh, there may be chance of uh, creating the excessive vibration. Now, this particular type of arrangement reduces the vibration and uh, consequently noise. Now, it also reduces the overall height of the tower where low uh, silhouette is called for. Now, with the either fan type re recirculation may be avoided where necessary by a canopy or directional louvers to concentrate the leaving air stream and increase its velocity. The modular design with multiple fans sometimes may be used with the fan switch in or out as per the requirement, as per the load, as per the requirement. Now, here you see that uh, this uh, uh, the contra flow force draught cooling tower with axial fan. Now, here you see the contra flow force draught cooling tower with centrifugal. Now, the rest of the things are common like you are having the eliminator in the both uh, um, configuration, hot water distribution, outlet, airport, packing, so uh, or co cold water basin, etc. But if you see the direction of the flow here and this is the floor mounted centrifugal, this uh, with the centrifugal fan. Now, the use of uh, forced draught fan facilitates the indoor sitting of a cooling tower. Now, here we are sh showing this that elevation of a four draught tower uh, sited in indoor like here you see and this is the air flow inlet. Now, here this is the plan of four draught tower um, within the indoors. Now, you can see this the louvers opening, cooling tower, this is the these are the louvers opening, ducting and this uh, centrifugal pump. So, both the axial one and this is the centrifugal one. Now, this is uh, the actual figure where the lower height uh, contra flow force dot cooling towers uh, with the centrifugal fans. Now, here you see these are the centrifugal fans and this is the packing or casing what uh, of these uh, um, uh, cooling towers. Uh, now, let us talk about the contra flow um, induced draught cooling tower. The input air usually comes through lowered uh, opening at the base uh, of the tower and uh, consequently uh, the performance can be affected by high winds. Now, this uh, can add to the airborne contaminations or contaminants, uh, introduction of contaminants into the cooling water and that sometimes uh, is highly undesirable. The multiple fan designs may be used enabling one or more fans to be switched off during the period of light load. So, by this way you can enhance the energy efficiency. Uh, usually the fan motors they are exposed to warm moist air stream and must therefore be suitably protected and that is the one of the important factor otherwise uh, um, the moist uh, air stream can attract some of the, uh, the debris or dust and dirt etcetera and that may create uh, a problem pertaining to the higher energy consumption sometimes wear and tear etcetera. Now, this is uh, here you see that uh, this is the contra flow induced draught cooling tower. Now, the arrangement is just like that here you are having the fan with the outlet air. So, air inlet with supported by louvers and uh, the packing as supported and here you see that uh, this is the hot water distribution line and uh, duly supported by eliminator and uh, as usual our cold water basin. So, here you see the, 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 the contra flow induced dot cooling um, uh, uh, tower here all these uh, uh, the, this air is sucked through uh, this way by giving the, the cooling effect to the fluid in question. 
Uh, here you see that this is uh, the, the actual figure of uh, contra flow induced drought steel frame cooling tower. All these things are in housed or cased in, um, in this particular um, housing. Here you see the there is a small you can, uh, uh, observations about uh, uh, the fan. Now here this is the contra flow induced drought timber frame cooling tower. Previously it was used, uh, and uh, these are the the supply lines. Now there are various advantages and disadvantages associated uh, with such type of a cooling tower. Um, like uh, they are having the counter flow and cross flow cooling tower. The advantage and disadvantages are based on the kind of flow of water cooling tower such as water side or air side flow. Now, uh, if we take uh, the advantages of cross flow cooling towers, especially for water side cooling tower, now it requires uh, lower pump heat, pump power and pumping energy. Now, there it is easier or there is an easy access to wet deck for maintenance because it is quite essential that uh, the wet deck must be approachable because of the maintenance and other aspects and sometimes wear and tear may take place. So, you need to replace certain packings and other things. So, it is uh, uh, it provides an ease on that particular uh, aspect. Now, better acceptance for of variation in water flow with economizer. Uh, now, economizer is used for the better energy efficiency. So, this type uh, in other words you can say these uh, cooling towers are better energy efficient. Now, for if we talk about uh, the air side cooling towers and if we discuss about uh, the advantages associated uh, pertaining to the cross flow cooling tower. Now, uh, here uh, the main advantage is that the lower static pressure loss with lower fan power requirement and thereby the energy consumption is on the lower side. So, you may say that these are somehow they are uh, energy efficient. They also reduce the drift, they also reduce the ch uh, chances of a recirculation and they require fewer cell for larger capacity. So, that is why they offer some sort of economics pertaining to these air side cooling tower. Now, let us talk about the disadvantages of uh, cross flow cooling tower. Now, when we see the water side cooling tower, uh, uh, the disadvantage, one disadvantage is that the potential orifice clogging and poor water distribution over the fill. Now, the wet deck basin may house the biological falling or sometimes may invite the microorganism growth because it is the wet in nature. Uh, they have the larger large tower footprint. Again, uh, this is again uh, one of the serious disadvantage. So, if we take uh, uh, the air side uh, uh, cooling towers, then the large inlet louver surface area, this makes icing and which is uh, more difficult to control. Now, if we talk about the advantage of the counter flow cooling towers, so if we take the water side in question, then the spread distribution, this improves the water droplet size. So, if uh, the water droplet size at the optimum level, so the energy efficiency uh, may be within the control. And the tower is taller and increased height accommodates closer approach. Now, if we take uh, um, the air side into account, then this counter flow improves the heat transfer. It is well known phenomena by this uh, uh, counter flow you can improvise the heat transfer. But simultaneously, when we talk about uh, the advantages, there are so many disadvantages associated with the counter flow cooling tower. Now, if we take water side first, then increased pump head due to spray nozzle, pump power requirement and pumping energy. 
Now, this uh, the spray nozzles they are uh, difficult to access and clean and sometimes they may clog over the period of time and thereby the efficiency of the cooling tower may be reduced. Now, if we take the air side, then high static pressure lo uh, losses, fan power requirement and energy consumption. The high inlet velocity, this may pull debris into the basin and thereby enhancing the microbial or biological activities. Then they may have a tendency for uneven air flow across fill. This can reduce the tower efficiency. Now, let us talk about uh, the indirect uh, uh, evaporative cooling tower. Now, when um, applied to air conditioning system, this design incorporates a sep, uh, the serpentine coil in the tower instead of packing. The hot water from the refrigeration plant cooled condenser is circulated through the coil and cooled in the tower by evaporative process. Although um, described as a closed circuit system, water is still being e evaporated in the tower and cooling efficiency is lower than uh, with the packed tower. A larger, sometimes a larger tower is needed with high capital and running cost. Sometimes the contamination uh, of the closed cooling water circuit is avoided, but purging and the treatment of the tower water is, is still required and uh, is likely to be more critical. Full evaporation cooling uh, can be achieved by interposing a heat exchanger between the condenser cooling tower circuit and a tower with standard packing. Now, this is uh, uh, the basic anatomy of indirect evaporating cooling tower. Here you see this, uh, um, all these things are as usual. Here you are circulating the hot water from the process and you are getting the cold water uh, uh, return to the process. And as we were discussing about the serpentine coil, here these are the serpentine coil. And you see that uh, all these things like outlet, air, eliminator, hot water distribution, all these things as per th the basic uh, theory. Now, here you see that uh, this is a cold water basin and pump for circulation and this is the air flow. Now, let us talk about uh, the evaporative condensers. The principle is similar to that of uh, the indirect evaporative cooling towers, but in this case the refrigerant is piped from the condenser to the cooling tower and cooled by the indirect evaporative method before return to the evaporator compressor of uh, the air conditioning system. Now, here you see that uh, we have represented this use of uh, cooling tower as evaporative condenser. Now, here uh, usual your thermodynamic cycle prevails. Here we are having this compression unit and these are the evaporative cooling cycles with the expansion valve. So, this is uh, the refrigerant, uh, refrigerant lines and uh, liquid is circulated through the expansion valve and then adiabatic uh, uh, process uh, prevails and then we are having the evaporator coil and it goes to the again to the system. So, these are the vapors. Now, uh, let us talk about uh, the design factors uh, or design factor affect the tower size. Now, while we are considering the standard tower layout and space requirement for standard towers, some of the general rules they uh, do prevail for the designing of these cooling tower. One is the contra flow force trot arrangement which we have already discussed, which occupies the minimum floor space, but tends to have a high profile because of its full diameter of axial fan, which must be accommodated in one side panel of the tower below the pack, if you recall the figure. The second is the contra flow induced trot tower. This requires the less space below the packing, but for satisfactory air flow, the fan casing and air circuit necessitates a projection at the top. So, it has to be housed at the top of the cooling tower. The min minimum sill height is achieved by a force trot floor mounted centrifugal fan, but this will increase the floor space 
requirement and the floor space can be reduced somewhat by encroaching on the area needed for the cold water basin. The cross flow towers they, they are compact whether force drought, induced drought or twin pack. The twin pack has the advantage over the other two because the air is discharged vertically. Now, these, uh, these points discussed they refer only to the tower height and the floor space. Now, let us talk about the component of uh, um, the cooling tower and the construction material because uh, always like uh, people may ask that uh, what are the, the construction material for the packing and other housing etcetera. Now, this uh, particular figure depicted the, um, the main components of mechanical drought cooling tower. Now, here you see this is the fan and this is the housing and axial uh, 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 this uh, axial flow fan and mild steel panels. Now, here you see that uh, uh, air inlet louvers packing and the gravity flow distribution system or drift eliminators. Now, uh, when we talk about the packing, nowadays the packing they are formed mainly from uh, various uh, polymers. Uh, polyvinyl chloride etcetera, but traditionally the timber was used as a packing material in the previous era. Now, it remains the most straightforward material to consider in order to understand that how the is the packing actually functions. Now, there are two fundamental approaches for packing design, one is the splash packing and second is the film principle. Now, this is uh, the splash packing in which the hot water falling through uh, the tower is encouraged to form a droplets and the mechanism of cooling is uh, represented in this particular figure. So, these are the water droplets and uh, once they are formed in the water droplets then or, uh, obviously, the surface area enhances and thereby this promotes the heat transfer. And then it goes to uh, this channel and the, the, this is your air flow. Now, in this particular mechanism, the staggered layers of timber, they are used to break the falling water into the droplets and there is a tendency of these droplets to agglomerate into the large drop at the edge of each lathe. Now, as they fall to the, um, the next staggered layer, they are broken down again. Now, due to the roughened surface uh, through the wetting in timber, consequently the maximum evaporation as the water passes through the packing take place. Now, improved air flow is achieved by using timber lathes uh, of triangular cross section. Let us talk about the film principle. In this, uh, the hot water encouraged to spread out uh, on the surface and form a thin film, thus providing the maximum surface area for evaporation and allowing, uh, allowing cooling to take place. Now, in early design, uh, the timber grid, they were used to maximize the film cooling effect and these grids consist of 20 or more timber slates and each uh, of uh, 35 into 50 uh, mm deep by 10 to 10 into 15 mm wide with 20 or more grids mounted the um, transversely one above and other to form the pack. Now, here you see that these this arrangement this is the PVC arrangement this shows the this particular figure shows the packing has a primary waveform. Now, see this is the waveform or you see this the corrugation in one plane and a secondary a smaller wave uh, front at the skew angle to the primary. Now, this is the upper view of PVC and this is the side view of the packing. Now, this is uh, uh, the uh, th this particular photograph shows the demountable plastic coated with wire basket. Now, this plastic film packs in the demountable plastic coated wire baskets. Now, such type of packing uh, provides uh, the maximum surface area without the bulk of uh, uh, the timber slates and enable the 
uh, the overall size of uh, uh, packing to be reduced radically. Now, in such type of packing, PVC is the most widely used material, but another plastics like polystyrene, polypropylene, polyethylene, they have also been used. Now, vacuum formed uh, polyvinyl chloride, this provides even distribution of, uh, even distribution of the falling film and at the same time, the presenting the lowest resistance uh, to airflow with ensuring maximum evaporative cooling. Now, there are various advantages associated with the, the use of plastic packing. One is that they are lightweight and ease of removal and replacement, it is quite easy. Uh, they behave inert in any kind of water, whether acidic or a basic. They do not break down to form the sludge as in the case of timber and metal packing. They do not have a problem of growth of any kind of scales. There is no chance or no problem of growth of algae or any kind of a microbial activity um, because they do not provide uh, any kind of uh, nutrients. They have no effect of electrolytic action. They can form to any shape required easily by just simply you change the mold, etc. They are non flammable in case of PVC. So, at last in this particular uh, lecture, we discussed about uh, the different parts of uh, cooling tower. Apart from this, we discussed about the different type of uh, cooling towers. And for your convenience, we have enlisted a couple of references. You can see them if you require any further assistance. Thank you very much.